I mean, I sit in this country and then through his eyes, I have traveled other countries. This way, I'm a, I'm a new country, a new town, and it's all because of you. I brought my son from the United States to America because of his man. And when I went to China, the things that I was seeing, the things that I was hearing, people just looking down upon me because I'm coming from Africa. I feel like if Africa becomes stronger, or if Africa becomes okay, will be respected out there. Bethold Winkler. Some of you may know him as Kobna Akon, but he's popularly known as Wedemaya. I personally got introduced to his channel during the pandemic after what I would call a serial recommendation of his videos from YouTube. And after weeks and weeks of procrastination, I finally decided to click on one of his videos. What I saw immediately blew my mind. I instantly spent more than 5 hours binge watching his videos alone that day. It became almost like a daily routine where I kept coming back and back to consume more content. In fact, I got hooked. Why? I can hear your curious mind asking. Well, if you're an African, especially one of the things you're more likely to be passionate about is Pan-Africanism. And there's no other person doing this better than Wodemaya on YouTube. From moving across Africa to telling about 25 countries as of 2022, to changing the narrative of Africa in the media, to interviewing great Pan-Africanists like Dr. Arikana Chihombori Kwao, Faisa P. Elo Lumumba, and badding ones like Osman Turi, to having some kind of special effects on the diaspora. I mean, it is one thing to tell people about Pan-Africanism, but it is another to be able to convince the African diaspora to come to the motherland. And how he does it beats my imagination, really. It is not surprising that he has over a million subscribers on YouTube and also featured on Forbes Africa magazine. In a nutshell, guys, he has caused major impact on the continent. But while all this sounds nice and sweet, it didn't come easy. His journey wasn't placed on a silver platter. It was filled with roadblocks and potholes from being deported to being arrested to being detained and brutalized or just to promote africa these are real issues that can make some of us question ourselves but guess what he never gave up honestly guys this has become one of my favorite stories to tell people partly because this inspiring story of his can be applied to all aspects of your life but if you're a pan-africanist especially then this video is for you because it is going to inspire you to keep pushing for a better africa so without much ado let's get the video started As the story goes, Wedemaya was born in Ahinkofi. Sounds strange? Well, it is a village in the western part of Ghana. There was nothing really extraordinary about his childhood as he came from a humble background and as a pastor's son, it can get pretty boring. But there was sort of a subtle competition in his family where the way you're being treated depended on your level of education. So for example, if you have a degree, then you were treated like a king and his older brother had been a beneficiary for a while. Young Berthold wanted more. He wanted to take his to the next level so from a younger age he always had it at the back of his mind that he must travel or study abroad his dream finally came through after he had a scholarship in the uk but was short-lived as he was denied visa still desperate he opted for china china now this is where the magic began. He attended Shenyang Aerospace University and studied aeronautic engineering. Okay, so let's jump ahead of the guns now. In March 2014, Maya uploaded his first YouTube video, but it wasn't what you think. Hey, oh boy, China. And after a series of similar videos that came in the form of comedy, he later got a call and it was from his dad. I sent you to school to become an engineer and not a clown. I want you to quit YouTube, says his dad. This single call made it seem like Maya's world came crashing. Fortunately for him, he had a savior, his mom. His mom believed in him and managed to convince his dad. Having felt the love and support from his mom, he changed the name of his channel from Mr. Ghana Baby to Wodemaya, which translates to my mom in Chinese. So after a month of father and son angry at each other, a call finally came through. Once again, it was from his dad. But this time, what his dad said changed everything. He said, if you really want to do YouTube, fine, but you should use a channel to educate the Chinese about Africa. He heeded to this golden advice and from then, his video started going viral for the first time. Fast forward, after months of consistency and persistence, he finally got to 100k subscribers on YouTube. Now, that was when he decided to come back to the motherland and tell the real African stories. But there was an issue, money. He didn't have enough capital to buy his tickets to Africa. So he had to resort to what seemed like his only option, his African friends. He tried so hard to pitch his vision to them, but they never supported. I came to Africa on a loan because I know and believe that promoting Africa 
was my calling. And yet, my African friends never supported this. I'm gonna say this over and over again. Except for one, he was a Chinese. Apparently, his Chinese friend believed in him, but also didn't have the money. So the Chinese had to use his camera as a collateral to secure a loan for Maya. Finally, Maya made his long voyage to the motherland and the first country was Ethiopia. Then after a couple of videos, he moved to Kigali, Rwanda and that was when he had his major breakthrough. Maybe you are not familiar with what I'm saying but perhaps you remember this video. I'm in the cleanest city in Africa. This video went on to become the most popular video on his channel, gathering millions of views and that propelled him to create more and more content across the continent. Launching his Africa to the world movement, he simply became unstoppable. The media's portrayal of Africa has always been negative. That is where he stepped up seven as the antidote to change the narrative and inspire others to take similar course. Due to his charismatic and humble nature, he had achieved so much in a relatively short amount of time, leaving prints of positivity wherever he finds himself and using his channel for so many charity works. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? But despite all this, the criticism started coming in and one of them was that most of the things he showcased in his videos did not belong to Africans themselves. Upon hearing this, he took it upon himself to interview Africans doing amazing things on the continent. Launching his African entrepreneurship series, he met with top African innovators and business persons, showcasing thousands of entrepreneurs doing great things that never caught the media's attention. This shows his channel even further. Sounds easy, right? I bet it is not. He was met with setbacks that can disturb an undetermined soul. He was arrested in Nigeria and Zambia. Or is it because I need to pass through all these things to become great someday? Because I know Kwame Nkrumah, Mandela, and the rest, they were all arrested. The from Uganda and Gambia. So everyone want to know why I got deported from Uganda back to Rwanda. And almost got denied entry in Zimbabwe, just to name a few. It sometimes gets quite nasty. This chick right here have been slapped so many times just for traveling in Africa. But he kept moving regardless. It's been crazy, man. But um, like I said, I'm not going to give up on showing you the real part of Africa that they don't show on TV. However, there's one final ingredient to talk about. At the mention of Pan-Africanism, some of the names that flashes your minds are the W.E.B. Du Bois, the Kwame Nkrumahs, the Malcolm X, the Marcus Garvey's, etc. But to put this video into perspective, let's find out what Pan-Africanism really is. According to this article, Pan-Africanism is the idea that people of African descent have common interests and should be unified. Therefore, Pan-Africanism is never complete without one thing the African diaspora and personally I think this is where Wodemeyer shines the most. This is what makes him a genius really. No one has the effect on diaspora like he does and like I said it is one thing to tell people about Pan-Africanism but it is another to convince people to trace their roots. The Ghana baby that's where I'm at. I'm in your country in your town and it's all because of you. I brought my son from the United States to America because of this man. I've been inspired by some of the people that have been posting some of these videos. One of those people is actually a uh, Wadamaya. What actually happened, I actually saw a video by a YouTuber named Wadamaya, who was here in Rwanda. Oh, wow. And seeing that video definitely inspired me to come here. Like many other Pan-Africanists, one of the things that is most consistent in his videos is about breaking the gap and unity. All I want is for us to come together as one, support each other, one Africa. And truly, this is the only way we can break from the shackles of neocolonialism and make Africa great again. The African diaspora, my kids and kin, wherever you are, you must always recognize the mothership is the continent and that you have an obligation which is divine to ensure that you work with us and we work with you so that the relationship is symbiotic with only one single aim, to make Africa great again. We cannot survive without unity. End of story. Udemaya has done really well and is continuing to do well for the continent. The guy has a lot of videos I personally can't keep count with. About a thousand videos. That should tell you the amount of work that has gone into his journey. And one other huge lesson you can take from this video is persistence and consistency to a specific cause. All that said, we can only be inspired by what he's doing and also do great things for the continent. So, if you've enjoyed this video up to this point, kindly give me a like. It will go a long way to help the channel. And also subscribe for more educative and exciting content about neocolonialism and pan-Africanism in general.